So I got involved in lighting in high school. I was working on the weekends at a nightclub in Melbourne. I just wound up covering for someone one night, doing lights for a band, and had a tiny little board with, I think, 12 faders on it, which meant I had basically 12 lights that could be on or off, and that was it. I just loved it. I was convinced I was rocking that harder than anyone else could ever do lights. I toured in America with an Australian band and their opening act was Sheryl Crow. And at the end of that year, Sheryl Crow called up and said, can you come and do lights for me? And now it's evolved into Stevie Nicks, Katie Lang, the Dixie Chicks, Lady Antebellum, Macklemore. The spread of things is what kind of makes it interesting and I think that there's something really satisfying with creating a very moody, feminine scene for someone like Miranda Lambert and then going out a week later and just annihilating everyone with Nine Inch Nails. The different skills that I've built, I'm lucky enough to be able to draw on different sets of them for different artists. Some people have the opinion that if you're noticing the lighting, you're doing something wrong, because that means it's maybe trumping the band. And I think a long time ago that was probably accurate, but now I feel as though it's all part of the show and bands expect that it's going to be doing things and it's going to be spectacular and it's going to add that next level uh, to their performance. I am here pre-programming a show for an artist called The Lonely Island. Uh, made famous uh, through Saturday Night Live. I'm basically trying to map out the stage like it's going to be at the show so that when we get to rehearsals in Los Angeles on Friday, I've, I'm not turning up looking like a total idiot. So you have to tell every single light to do every single thing. So we basically build these huge set of instructions so that when we get out there, we can very quickly say we want these lights in this position, at this time, in this colour, and boom, they're ready to go. I have what's called a theatrical approach, which is a ridiculous term, but it's just cleanly lighting the people you need to see and, and then creating that mood around it. I also feel as though, because I have a musical background, I, I like to pick up on musical things, um, and so that dictates a lot of how I think about cues or the mood. For the longest time, all my clients were large, out-of-town touring clients. Minneapolis, it was just a nice, easy place to come back to. And my wife's family's here and kids are here in school. And, and I kind of just had this bizarre underground existence here. But after a long time, I realized that I had no connection to the local industry and wound up contacting people saying, hey, you know, I live here and I don't know, maybe I can help you out. There were basically two larger breaks and the first was with Doomtree. I contacted those guys and I came to them with this ridiculously lofty plan and it was really fun. It was local people that are talented and they're crazy with a very passionate audience. It was like all the things that I enjoyed. And then uh, the other connection was meeting the TPT guys and getting to work on Lower Town Line. So I got to bring my TV experience from lighting bands and TV specials. For me, it was great because we got to give a lot of artists kind of a show. It was really fun meeting them and saying, hey, we're going to do lights and we're going to make you look good. And, and that also led to relationships with some of those people too, so. I 
feel now that I've, I've got a much better connection to the, to the local industry. I've known Hall and Oates' production manager for a long, long time. And last year they did a tour and they wanted to kind of step it up a little bit this year. And so they called me late last year. You know, we're not one of those bands that, that has a lot of uh, whiz-bang effects and things like that. We want our songs to be front and center. We want our band to be front and center. Both Daryl and I had enough sense to leave him alone and let him do his thing and create this incredible interpretation of our music. Uh, the, the production he did for us and the video presentation and it is by far the best thing we've ever done. Uh, I really love what, what, what he brought to this concert tour. Designing a show, there's a lot of, you know, elastic components to it. And I think that, you know, once we started putting things in place, it, then we wound up with a, you know, reasonable sized show that, uh, that they now have on the road. Uh, but it also gave us a lot of tools to work with and a lot of things that help, you know, add a whole other layer to their show. Oh.